Hello everyone, today I've decided to explain Newton's three laws of motion in a way that's understandable to the average person. I will be talking conceptually and in my own words, so if you're looking for supplements for taking a physics class, there are plenty of other resources that will serve you better. And as for the usual disclaimer, I do in fact have a master's in physics and I tutor college physics for a living, so I consider myself an expert on this subject. However, I am still a random guy on the internet, and so you should take everything you hear in this video with the internet's grain of salt. So first, Isaac Newton lived a long time ago. When did Isaac Newton live? Uh, like the 1700s, I want to say? Isaac Newton and his peers were working together to write down the laws of motion in the physical universe. And it was Newton who got credit for the three laws that we know today. So what are those laws? Newton's first law says that an object at rest or in motion will remain at rest or in motion unless acted on by an outside force. If something is sitting still, it will remain still unless something pushes it or pulls it or exerts a force field on it. A thing can't just spontaneously start moving on its own. And the same is true for the other way. If something is moving, it will remain moving at constant speed until and unless it is acted on by some force. We don't really see this in our everyday lives because things tend to fall, but that's because they're acted on by a downward force, gravity. And when something is resting still on top of a surface, we might tilt that surface, but it's sort of staying still, kind of. If we move it around, it is moving, but then it's stopping. That's because of the friction against my hand. So anytime something starts moving, or stops moving, or changes speed or direction, that's because there is an outside force causing it to do so. The place where this is clearest is outer space, when asteroids, or planets, or astronauts, or spaceships will float and they will continue moving in the same direction with the same relative velocities to everything else until they expel fuel. Burning fuel counts as an outside force because the fuel that's burnt is ejected and counts as a different object. So yeah, if you're ever playing a space video game and you hit the accelerator, it's not like driving a car. You will not slow down when you take your finger off the gas. So that's Newton's first law. Newton's second law says that the heavier an object is, the more force it takes to accelerate it. This makes sense if you compare two things that have different weights. For something that's light, it's very easy to move it around. For something that's heavier, it's a little more difficult to move it around. That's Newton's second law at work. And you know this very well if you've ever tried to pull a wagon versus if you've ever tried to pull a car. But Newton's second law isn't just an idea. It is so precise, it can be written as a mathematical equation. The sum of the forces on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. The sum of the forces means you have to add all forces on the object, including their directions. So if, for instance, a sign is hanging by two wires, you have to add up the tension in both wires along with gravity. You do this by treating the forces as vectors, lining them up tip to tail, and then drawing a final vector from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. And that final vector is the net force that tells you which direction the acceleration points in. If the object is not moving, all these vectors will add up to zero. So that's Newton's second law down. Newton's third law is commonly stated as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But a more precise way of stating it would be every force has an equal and opposite counterforce. If I hold my hands together and I push them together, I am pushing with the same force from my right hand onto my left hand as I am from my left hand onto my right hand. I push them together, even if I go back and forth, it's the same force going left as it is going right. Now how is that so if I can make my hands move? Well the reason is because it's my shoulders that are exerting more forces on my hands as a whole, rather than my hands exerting differential forces on each other. And when I do this, the third law counterforce is my shoulder pushing back on the rest of my body. And the reason my hands move instead of my body is because my body is much heavier than my hands. And this is true for every force. Every object that exerts a force on another object gets an equal and opposite counterforce exerted back on it. This is true even, for instance, with gravity. The International Space Station is orbiting the Earth at however fast it's going. But because of Newton's third law, 
the Earth is also orbiting the International Space Station. The reason we don't feel the Earth moving because of this is because the Earth is so much heavier than the space station. And the motion of the Earth is so small that it can't be measured. It's not even comparable to the nucleus of an atom. For every force, there's an equal and opposite counterforce. So those are Newton's three laws of motion. Newton also wrote down another law, but it's not given a number because it's different in characters from the laws of motion. This is Newton's universal law of gravity, which is best expressed by this equation. It says that the strength of the gravitational force between two objects depends on the masses of the two objects and the distance between them. If either of the masses gets larger, the gravitational force between them increases. And if the separation distance increases, the force gets weaker. That's why the masses are in the numerator of the fraction and the distance is in the denominator. What about this g? Well, that is the gravitational constant. It sets the scale of gravity in the universe. If two objects were held the same distance apart and g increased, the gravitational force between them would also increase. And what was revolutionary about this is that Newton claimed this law was relevant throughout the entire universe. The same force that makes apples fall to the ground holds the moon in orbit around the Earth. Now, this law is not quite universal, but we'll talk about what Einstein did with gravity another time. So there you have it, Newton's three laws of motion. An object at rest or in motion will remain at rest or in motion unless acted on by an outside force. The heavier an object, the more force is required to accelerate it. And for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And also gravity. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Don't forget to like, and I will see you next time.